I am not one for camping. I simply just do not see the appeal. However, my daughter begged me to go camping and I would do anything to spend more time with my daughter. So naturally we went camping. But instead of traditional camping out in the woods or at a campsite, we camped outside in our back garden. My back garden has a huge fence behind a forest with a fire pit. And some nights we hear animals out in the woods. Nothing out of the ordinary, just foxes, deers and the occasional elks. We sort of camped outside our conservatory which was an extension of our house. So we could plug in a TV and watch TV while camping. Not exactly traditional, but it worked for me. It went well, for the most part. We pitched our tent and started a fire in our fire pit. This was actually kind of nice. It was a lot different from how I went camping with my family when I was young. We put out the fire early and went inside our tent to watch some TV. My daughter, being young, naturally wanted to watch Frozen. I sighed in frustration and agreed. It wasn't long into the movie until I was fast asleep. I assumed that it wasn't much longer until my daughter did the same. I woke up a couple of hours later. My daughter was asleep and sound in her sleeping bag. The TV was still on and just as I was about to turn it off and go inside to use the bathroom, which is a godsend when you are camping in your back garden. But I was stopped by what sounded like a screech from an elk out in the woods. Hmm, I thought. That sounded kind of close. And kind of odd, I didn't think elk were nocturnal animals. I could be wrong, however. I was about to get up again until I heard the elk tampering with the fence. It sounded like the elk was rubbing against the fence. I know elks usually rub their antlers on trees, but not usually a fence. I was kind of paralyzed by this. The brief thought of a burglar or unwanted guest in our back garden terrified me. As that fleeting thought passed, I was able to hear something successfully jumping over our fence. I was now on full alert. I could hear something or someone walking around our back garden. It sounded like it was walking on all fours, but the footsteps were fast and horrifically swift. The animal then walked over to our tent. I was able to hear then long and deliberate breathing. The breathing was not natural. It sounded like someone was trying to breathe, but had their lungs filled with blood. The creature then began to circle our tent. I could see parts of the tent beginning to cave in, like someone was pushing their hand through the tarp of the tent. This was terrifying. The imprint definitely looked like a hand. Thankfully, my daughter was in the middle of the tent, and whoever was outside was unable to touch her. The creature then walked around to the front of the tent, and it seemed to trip or trod over the extension lead, coming from the TV. It began to pull the lead. This pulled me out of my shock, and I immediately unplugged the TV. The cord was forcefully pulled out of the tent. I hugged my daughter and did my best to control my breathing. My heart was pounding out of my chest. I was just grateful that my daughter was still asleep. The creature then made its way closer to the tent. That is when I started to see the zipper to the tent move from top to bottom. It was trying to get in. I did the only thing I thought I could and hold the zipper shut. The creature eventually gave up and started walking around the backyard. About 20 minutes went by and I heard the creature was on our deck. The creature definitely had hooves which was strange as I knew I saw a hand, so I was confused at this point. Eventually, our automatic porch light turned on and cast a shadow of the creature on our tent. The outline was horrifying. It was tall and lanky and had long antlers with human-like features, but its limbs looked bent and crippled. A part of me wanted to open the tent and peek, a little sneak peek, but something told me that that was a bad idea. Thankfully, the porch light seemed to startle the creature and it ran off back over the fence of our backyard towards the woods. I took this time to pick up my daughter and make a run for it. I moved quicker than normal and luckily, my daughter didn't wake. I opened the door and locked it swiftly behind me while holding my daughter. I laid her down on her bed and we both spent the night inside. 
The next morning I woke up and went outside to clean up camp. I could see hoof prints around the backyard. They circled my back garden and they definitely belonged to a deer of some kind. Keep in mind, for those reading, my fence is six foot tall. Not exactly an easy jump for anyone. I just brushed it off with a weird encounter with a deer in my back garden. Fast forward a week later, I'm outside by the fire pit, enjoying a nice cold beer. The fire pit is not too far from the fence. As I'm relaxing by the fire, I'm able to hear something on the other side of the fence. It's that breathing again, that unnatural breathing. I hop up and try to look over the fence, but by the time I got onto the top, I was only able to see something book it into the dark, hollowy woods. It looked big and I was freaked out by this, so I decided it was time to go in. I smothered the fire and headed inside. I freaked out, but I didn't tell my wife. She gets scared of anything. I spent the rest of the evening just chilling and watching TV downstairs. I can hear my wife doing the dishes in the kitchen. She enjoys doing it and it relaxes her. Lucky me. Just like most kitchen sinks, there's a window right in front overlooking our back garden. As I'm relaxing and watching TV, I hear a shattering of dishes, followed by my wife saying, what the hell is that? She's pointing out the window to the back garden. I get up and glance to see what she's looking at and follow her finger. Standing in the back garden is only what I can describe to be a demon. The creature was tall and pale, with very long limbs. It had antlers, but had the face of a man the creature seemed unaware that we had seen it. It seemed to be sniffing where I was sitting by the campfire. I did the only thing I could think of at the time and called the police. Before I was able to finish the call, the creature had jumped over the fence. I made a report over the phone, but I didn't recommend the officers coming over as the creature had left and there wasn't a point. After dealing with that and trying to calm down my wife, it was pretty late at night. I don't know what to call it. The only thing that comes to mind is a demon of the woods. I'm pretty sure that me and my wife saw was the same creature that was trying to get in the tent that same night. Whatever that creature was, it was now getting braver and smarter. My wife and I began waking up late at night and began hearing sounds coming from our back garden. They were the same sound as the lungs filled with blood. The creature was smart. It stood far enough to not activate our automatic porch lights, standing in the darkness of our back garden. At times, I would see what looked like red eyes peering back at me, but I can't be completely sure. I think one night, the creature was able to enter our home. I remember waking from a deep slumber, still very groggy and disoriented, but my daughter leaves the bathroom light on, which is down the hall from our bedroom. It's still light shines through the bottom of our doorway. Once I was awakened, I heard the sounds of what sounded like hooves coming up our wooden stairs. The footsteps went from the stairs to the front of my bedroom door. I could see the shadow underneath the door. I could hear the door handle slowly turning, but the door never opened. The creature then turned and went back down the stairs. Instead of getting up and making sure my house was clear of the creature, I just went back to bed. I woke up the next morning and immediately checked on my daughter, and she was okay. I thought I had dreamed it, but that is until I saw my back door to my back garden. It was wide open. This story happened a couple of years ago. It was me and my group of friends that we would go camping with quite often. It was our junior year and we had two weeks left before school started. We wanted to have fun and so we decided to go camping deep into the woods. During this time, me and my friends were kind of into survivalism. We wanted to go camping with the bare essentials. We only bought some food and some tools that we could all build a shelter with and a couple of sleeping bags. I also bought a tarp just in case things didn't go so well. We literally picked a random patch of woods to go camping in. We went early in the day and tried to set up our campsite for the night. 
We found a couple of sticks and logs and tried to put them together to make a shelter. I'm actually kind of impressed looking back on how well we did. It takes us about four to five hours to make a decent shelter for all four of us. I wouldn't recommend doing what we did late in the afternoon. After spending most of our days building our shelter, we were pretty hungry. As we were eating, it was around six or seven in the evening, we decided to tell some scary ghost stories to make things more fun. We told your basic ghost stories, nothing too crazy. There was one that was kind of good, but wasn't that scary. As the night got later and the fire got more dim, that's when the more interesting stories came out, and we started talking about skinwalkers. I had heard about them before, but I haven't heard about some of the additional information that I heard that night. Apparently skinwalkers used to be people, and they kind of sold their souls to the devil, or something along the lines. By doing so, this granted them powers and the ability to change from one shape to another, mostly animals. I kind of had an idea about that, but this I didn't know. When you spoke or even thought of the word skinwalker, it would draw their attention to you. Of course, me and my friends were skeptical about this idea. That's kind of silly, don't you think? Deep down though, something about that kind of terrified me. From that point on, I was kind of on edge that evening. As the fire was practically out, we'd realised that all the noise outside had suddenly stopped. All the wildlife, all the animals, they stopped making their usual noises. Even the bugs that constantly bugged us that evening had stopped making any noise. Everyone, as if at once, kind of perked up into the air, searching for the sound, hoping for something normal to be happening. But deep down, we knew that it wasn't. Something was happening, it was bringing out our primitive nature that kind of put us on edge. As if there was a predator nearby. None of us said anything, we just listened to the crackling of the fire, as if it slowly faded into the night. As the fire got dimmer and dimmer, we could hear something getting slowly and slowly louder, as if it was approaching us from a far distance. The sound was accompanied by a horrible smell. It was as if there was a rancid meat being hung in front of a dirty trash can that was blown right in all of our faces. Now, being the tough guys that we were, and the idiots, we realised that none of us had packed a flashlight, kind of going with the theme of survivalism and having the bare essentials. There was definitely something inside the woods making it way through the bush. Whatever the creature was, it didn't sound small. It could have even been a moose or something, but during this time of year, it was kind of unlikely. All of us were quietly scanning the tree line, trying to see if we could see what it was that was stogging around our campsite. That's when I had this odd idea. I told all my friends about what we heard earlier about the skinwalkers. I told them all to stop thinking about them and hopefully they would go away. Normally my friends would have made fun of me for this, for suggesting such a silly idea, but I think they were so scared that they had no choice but to agree with me. I then brought up a random conversation, anything to take off our minds of what was happening, and it seemed to be working. The sounds from our campsite seemed to be going away, as did the rancid smell. About 30 minutes later, it was as if all things were back to normal. The sounds of the forest came back to our ears and we were pretty excited. I then made the suggestion that we should pack up and go home, considering what was going on. It was about one in the morning, but it seemed like a better idea than staying out here for the rest of the night, especially with those creatures. I proposed the idea and unanimously my friends all agreed that we should have left a long, long time ago. One of the perks of not having much material when we were camping is that you don't have to pack up as much. We were packed in about 15 minutes, all four of us, including putting out the fire. We were out of our campsite in record time, back onto our trail, hiking back to our cars. Unfortunately, this hike was about 20 minutes, and none of us had a flashlight. 
As we were hiking, I couldn't help but to think about what happened earlier. That's when the smell came back. But not just the smell. The sounds of multiple creatures coming through the woods slowly approached our rear. There wasn't just one creature, there was at least three of them. My friends seemed to be catching on and we tried to return back to our tactic of not thinking about it. But we were out in the woods with no flashlight, being stalked by three skinwalkers. The task of not thinking about it was nearly impossible. We were about 10 minutes when we started hearing what sounded like our friends being mimicked by a weird radio. The sounds sounded static and it wasn't quite a perfect impression of our friends. The skinwalkers were mimicking what we had said all that night, saying phrases that we had said that evening as if they had been listening, trying to perfect what we say and how we say it. My friends wanted to stop and try turn rounds and confront these creatures. I told them that that was not possible. We had to keep moving forward or else. At this point, we started sprinting down this trail. We have no idea where we're going. It's pitch black and these things behind us are now screeching and screaming these terrible sounds. We finally go to where we think our cars are and by some miracle, we're able to find our way back to our cars. At this point, all of our gear has been dropped and we have nothing but our shoes and clothes on our backs. We all jumped in my truck and thankfully it was a four door. We were all inside, I turned on the car and my headlights were on. Facing the woods that we had just exited, the sight laid before us was terrifying. About 20 yards away from us, in the woods, stood three creatures. They were all about eight feet tall. The creatures looked like a cross between a moose and a wolf. All of them had very large antlers. Some of them were broken off and some of them were stained with blood red, but all of them had very, very large teeth. Their eyes were piercing red, and it was as if they were glowing. But all of these features do not come remotely close as to what made these terrifying creatures more terrifying. They were all standing on their hind legs. I get home from work, it's almost midnight. The door opens and the home security system does that high pitch beep beep chime. I'm in my kitchen eating a late dinner before going to bed. I hear a door open and then the home security thing goes beep beep beep. But it definitely sounded like it came from outside. I'm sitting right by the back door so I go check the front door. The front door has a screen door in the wooden door that leads to the small entry room. Then the second door inside that leads up to the stairs and into the house. These are loud old doors. I didn't hear the screen door open and the main door closed, but I also didn't hear the second door open. The door is just double locked and no other doors are open. Nobody is standing outside. Okay, maybe it was the neighbor's door and maybe they have the same system. I hear it again and it sounds like it's coming from outside of the front house. I look out the window, it looks like there's a deer outside. It's crawling on the yard with its belly on the ground. It decides to stand up and continues to stand up, but on its back legs. The deer makes the beeping sound with its head raised up into the air. It's not a deer. It looks like a guy, but with deer legs. It's almost too dark to see what's really going on. I'm home. What the fuck? I'm home. The creature sounds like a dog is barking, but it sounds like it's trying to vomit at the same time. It starts to gallop and across the street. Beep. 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 What's weird about this is that I do not live in a rural area. The deer population typically stays down towards the outskirts of the city. I have never seen or heard anything like this. <laughs>